You mentioned about the in conversation events that you were doing and kind of looking back on them, how you feel about them now. What really struck me was that you were making, it seemed to me, it, it making this incredible effort to connect with people, being able to be just a little more open and willing to like listen essentially to people and to be a bit kind of more vulnerable can actually lead to connection, which in itself can lead to something really beautiful. I'd call that David White, the poet, calls that uh, robust vulnerability. It's a beautiful expression, and, and it's a sort of strength through being uh, open. And um, that, that doesn't mean just you know, blurting everything out all the time, but it's, it's just being open to the world and to, to situations and... Um, and there's enormous value in that for yourself, but for other people as well. Um, and, and I think if anything, the, the, the red hand files were, were an attempt and the in conversation events too, were, were to, somehow, um, to somehow move beyond the sort of cynicism um, and even contempt, I would say, that I had to, to some degree toward the world, especially when I was young, you know, a kind of, a, 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 that I misunderstood the workings of the world and thought the world was um, a bad place and that people did bad things, you know. And, and, and that is uh, something that comes through the Red Hand Files over and over again. And I tried to answer that question many times in the Red Hand Files. It's just like, the world is shit you know, signed Fred from Melbourne or something like that, you know. And this is a, this is a kind of mantra-like thing of, of despair and bitterness towards the world. And um, I think the Red Hand Files allowed me to dismantle that world worldview. The death of Arthur dismantled that worldview to see that that's actual, actually fundamentally wrong. The world is beautiful, that it's a beautiful place, um, that, that, that terrible things happen within it, uh, corruptions of our institutions, all sorts of things are going on, but ultimately the underlying driving force of the world is love. That it made me look at people not in terms of, of evilness, but rather suffering, and that people are simply driven to certain acts um, because of, of kind of multi-layered suffering.